With the Super Bowl in the books, it is mock draft season. I'm John Schmoke, joined by Paul Dettino. And Paul, the NFL Combine, believe it or not, is just two weeks away. The offseason is coming fast and furious. Let's take a look at some of the most recent mock drafts out there. We'll start with Todd McShay from ESPN. Paul, the Giants picked twice in the top ten, one at number five. He has them selecting George Karloftis, the defensive end out of Purdue. And then with the Bears pick, which the Giants acquired in last year's trade at seventh overall, he has them selecting N'Kobe Dean, a very fast downhill linebacker out of the University of Georgia. Interesting, John, is that this is one of the few mock drafts I think we've seen so far that doesn't have the Giants taking at least one offensive lineman yeah. between numbers five and number seven. He's going defense for both, and he's taking guys who are totally contrasting in terms of their physical build. You're talking about Dean, who's maybe a little over six feet and only about 220 pounds. He's a speedster, Butkus Award winner, uh, coming out of Georgia as the number one linebacker at NCAA Division I level last year. All he had six sacks. He's a guy who will play in space and he will track down ball carriers wherever they are and can play in coverage. Karloftis, 6'4", 275. He's a big boy. Now, he's going to be a 4'3 defensive end in the pros. And Dean is going to be a 4-3 weak side linebacker in the pros. So we're talking two totally different guys on defense. And Koloff, there's maybe someone that could even dip inside on passing. Yes, down to it, play that some three, three technique. technique. Style. Absolutely. Yeah. Or maybe even a 3-4 defensive end spot, depending Possibly. on his strength as well. Different things he can do. All right, let's go to mock draft number two. Our buddy Dane Brugler over the athletic ball. Number five, Evan Neal, offensive tackle out of Alabama. I think the consensus top offensive lineman in the draft, but that kind of goes back and forth. And then at seventh overall, certainly the consensus top safety in the draft, Kyle Hamilton. All right, well, let's start with Neil, 6'7", and oh yeah, by the way, shout out to Howard Cross, roll tide, I get it. The guy is just a huge physical specimen. Over 350 pounds. Yes, played right tackle, you know, over with the tide. And I guess some of the question is, where would you play him if he got to the NFL? Are you going to put him in the left side? You might. You could. He's a big guy. Most people seem to think he's going to be better off, though, on the right side. Talking about Hamilton, look, we've mentioned him in the past. The guy is a top 10 talent. I don't think anyone's going to dispute that, John. But the question is, how are you going to use him? Versatile guy out of Notre Dame can play what is known as either the money backer or the star. It depends on what system you're in, what name they like to call him. I go with money backer, which means he can play either safety spot, can play some slot, play some outside linebacker in the sub. It's that spot Teron Matthew plays for the Chiefs. Exactly. And so, you know, you're looking at a guy who, if your coach doesn't know what he's going to do with him, you guys got to be on the same page with alignment, as Joe Shane likes to say. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of in a pickle when you take him. Yeah, bigger safety, over six foot, over 220 pounds. Yeah. So a lot of versatility there. Great athlete, too. Good ball tracker. All right, finally, Trevor Sikama over at a pro football focus, Paul. Number five, another new name, Kayvon Thibodeau, the edge rusher out of Oregon. And then at number seven overall, an interior offense. Offensive lineman. We haven't seen a center go mm -hmm. in the top 10 in the NFL draft in more than 25 years. Tyler Linderbaum out of Iowa. Let's start with him for a second first because he's a bit undersized, a shade under 300 pounds, John. Now, that doesn't mean he can't play the position effectively because what everybody says about him is that his smarts are off the charts, his technique is as good as it gets, and so people do frankly believe he's the best center in this draft. The question is, how high do you draft a center? Yeah, and he might be ideal for an outside zone scheme, too. How are you going to use him? So, so there's a lot of doubt there as to where his fit is. Now, you mentioned Thibodeau. Thibodeau, by most accounts, has the highest upside as a pure pass rusher in this draft. Okay, he's one of those speed rushers. Doesn't play the run as well. He's going to need to add more power in the NFL if he's going to be a full three-down kind of player. But... His speed is just so devastating. People, a lot of them say to me, you know, I see some O.C.U. Manure in there. I see some even maybe Michael Strahan in there because he's only going about 255 pounds. He's really not very big and powerful, but, man, he is fast off the snap. How he and Aiden Hutchinson test at the combine could go a long way to determining which one of those guys goes off the Especially board Especially the power drills. No question about it. For Paul Dettino, I'm John Schmelk. That's your latest look at the latest mocks.